Hey guys, Girl Got Game here. We've got some, uh, some rebellion within the rebellion going on this time around. With a coup being planned against the future queen. And we've always believed in Diana up to this point, and things have generally gone well. But now it's time to see what would happen if one of these guys was ruling the world. So, I've started with Shadow, because... Not only is he my favorite, but he is also the first person I trained with that wasn't, that was after Diana. So, let's see what happens when Shadow rules the world. We'll start with the first option here that's different from his root, which is, uh, I believe in you all. They were right. She was very powerful, and if she truly was corrupted, then she needed to be cut off before she caused any damage. Thoughts of revenge bubbled in my mind, reminding me of how horrible she had been in the human world when she had tried to take the boys away from me. She had the gall to take my energy and test me at school as some sort of sadistic teacher. She had this coming to her. The four in the room stared at me, taking in my reply. <laughs> I'm fairly shocked. Well, now what do we do with her? I waited as the group looked to each other before Faye magically formed a small vial in their hand. Should we give it to her? She's close enough to her. Huh? Give what? Ooh. That looks dangerous. Faye ignored me and passed the vial to Shadow, who began to imbue it with his own dark magic. Slowly, the glass began to fill with a dark, inky liquid, stopping a quarter of the way up. Was it poison? Shadow passed it to Rabbit, who did the same, creating a purple liquid within the vial and swirling it around to mix the liquids together. The contents separated a bit, causing a strangely beautiful gradient effect. As Sargent took a hold of it, it began to fill with green liquid, becoming mixed with the poison already within the vial. Finally, they took the vial back and shoved a cork into the top before shaking the mixture violently. As they did, a strange gray energy began to glow around it, pulsing like a heartbeat, and slowing until it eventually faded away. There. From the tone of their voice, the decision to truly go through with this was solidified. They all were serious and wanting Diana to die. I felt a little pity for what was to come. Faye turned and floated to me, holding out the vial. We were gonna give this to her during the final celebration after the siege, but we're pretty sure that guard will be watching her like a hawk. Then why give it to me? Because she trusts you. I have a theory that she'll pull you aside, away from everyone else, to have a little chat before you're sent back to the human world. That theory is correct. How can you be so sure? Shadow smirked. Because when we tried to send you home, she tried to slip in an extra item onto the spell reagent list. And according to my recent studies, it is actually very important to demons like her. I suspect that she was going to give it to you as a gift. The flower. Interesting. So she was going to send that home with her. <laughs> now I'm even more confused about her re reactions to how she felt about Angel and insert guy here, sometimes like James or Matthew or whoever. Since the gate spell didn't work, she probably took the time to find it herself. She'll take you aside and give it to you before you leave, which will give you the chance to be alone with her. I was surprised. Diana was going to give me something important? I was curious as to what it was, but my thoughts trailed off as I stared at Faye's hands, which were still holding the vial of poison. I guess it was a good thing you listened in then. Makes our job a bit easier. I slowly reached out and took the vial, feeling a very subtle heartbeat emit from it. It took every ounce of will I had to not drop it in surprise. Was this thing alive? I brought it close and examined it, practically feeling its power. If Diana was as powerful as they expected, then how powerful was this poison? I was paying such close attention to the vial in my hand that I didn't see Faye swooping back behind me and grabbing my head. What the- Sorry! All at once, my mind began to become fuzzy and light. What was happening to me? Is that really necessary? It will lower the risk of her telling anyone about our plans until the chance arises. When it does, she'll remember everything and know what to do. I would forget about this? How did this make sense? I didn't get a chance to fight back until my vision blacked out. You could have told me what to do with this. What am I supposed to do? Like, hold her mouth open? Throw it on her face? What? 
I shut my eyes and felt the world spin around me before I relaxed as silence overtook my senses. My body floated for a bit in an empty void before softly landing on the surface, causing me to open my eyes and look around. Huh? What happened? I was in the hallway on the floor. How did I get there? I was on my way to my room. Weird. Where did they put that vial? I stood up, brushed myself off, and looked around, hoping that no one saw me snoozing on the floor. When I noted that the coast was clear, I quickly continued on my way to my room. I must have been more tired than I thought. Alright, so that's that. Um, I guess I'll bring you in when I slip Diana that vial. Alright, see you in a little bit, guys. Alright, y'all. Diana lived through that final battle, so it's uh, time to remember our mission. I followed, curious as to where she was going. I made sure to remain quiet as I separated from the rest of the group and followed her out of the room into the hall. The entire journey, Diana didn't speak a word. Even Saro didn't follow her, most likely being told that she wanted to speak to me alone. Diana led me through the castle, up a couple sets of stairs, into what looked to be a royal bedroom with a balcony. Was this the guest room? It was untouched, and I could smell the very faint scent of dust. Why did she bring me here? Diana stepped into the room, using her magic to ignite the candelabras and air out the room by opening the balcony window. Before I could ask, however, Diana finally spoke up. I have to thank you, dear. No, you really don't. For what? For aiding us in this war. We've been fighting the Demon Lord for so long. We thought the war would never end. As terrible as the circumstance was, if you hadn't been summoned here, we probably would have still been fighting now. Diana walked to the balcony and leaned against the railing, staring into the dark night sky. The light from the room illuminated her form as she gazed at the stars. Despite the situation around us, the air seemed calm with the faint echo of the celebrations whispering through the night. I walked over and stood beside her, leaning against the balcony, and looked at Diana as she smiled and let out a chuckle. To be very honest, I didn't expect to ever see you again. After I took your energy that night, I vowed to never deal with humans again. No clairvoyance could have told me about you coming into play in this war. I wasn't exactly counting on coming here. I still don't want to be here. I won't say that, that's just too cruel. But at least I got to help bring peace here. Diana smiled, nodding to me. I really was glad to help bring peace to a world. It wasn't out of pride or vanity. It was a matter of helping people clearly in need. We owe you much thanks. I'll accept your thanks when I finally get married. <laughs> oh, I had almost forgotten. When do I get the opportunity? I tilted my head at her. What was she talking about? Diana lifted one of her hands towards the sky and waved her hand through the air, making a soft purple mist glow around her fingers. Within seconds, the mist morphed and formed itself into a lavender-colored lily, resting peacefully between Diana's fingers. She brought it down and presented it to me with a kind gaze. A gift, my dear. A gift? I slowly took the flower out of Diana's hands and inspected it visually. It was light, but I could feel a soft glow of magic emanating from the stem and petals. The bloom reminded me of a human world lily, but something about it seemed otherworldly. A flower known only to demons of Lilith. We call it the Flower of Lilith, because these flowers were said to have been created when Lilith first appeared in the Abyssal Plains. I stared at Diana, not understanding why she was giving me such a gift. She chuckled at my confusion and leaned against the railing, continuing her explanation. It is also a flower we succubi use when we marry. Use? What do you mean? Diana chuckled again before she gently took the flower from my hands and tucked it behind my ear. As it settled against my ear, I felt mist circle my head and form into a flower crown of lavender lilies. The way Diana looked at me made me feel like I was in my bridal wear already. A human you may be, but Lilith would have been proud to see you marrying one of her own. These flowers represent her blessing, and may only crown the worthy. I felt a blush run across my cheeks. This was a blessing? I slowly reached up and ran my fingers along the flower crown adorning my head, feeling the soft petals against my fingertips. They were almost pulsing with energy. I felt both flattered and honored that a simple flower felt that I was worthy enough to crown my head, despite my murderous intentions. Diana let out a sigh and looked back to the sky, making me do the same. 
One would have expected the sky to be full of smoke or smell of a war's aftermath, but the sky was clear and fresh air drifted through my nose as I inhaled. It was indeed another world, and tonight was my last night in it. I guess this will be my last night, won't it? <laughs> and there it is. I turned my head to Diana in confusion. She didn't look to me and continued to smile at the sky. What was she talking about? In Diana's hands formed a small goblet containing a dark liquid I assumed to be wine. She placed the goblet towards me on the balcony without looking and waited. She avoided looking towards me as she waited for something to happen. What was she... So she knew. Why is she... I then felt a small weight in my pocket and memories flood back into my mind. I stared at Diana in shock when I realized what she was doing. She knew? And she was willing to take it? I stared at the goblet, now measuring the worth of this action. The vial in my pocket could be so many things. A sleeping draught, poison, acid. Diana, however, seemed to be accepting of whatever it was. I became suddenly conflicted. Did I want to do this to her? I mean, that's the whole point, right? I am curious. Before I say yes, what happens if we say no? I remember the promise I had made, but I couldn't go through with it. Diana was my friend now, and she had done so much for me in this world. She didn't deserve whatever this vial had in store for her. I took the goblet and cleared my throat, finally getting Diana to turn her head and look at me. <clears throat> it can't be your last night. You have a world to rule. One drink isn't going to kill you. Diana stared at me, a look of per pure confusion on her face, before she looked to the goblet in my hand, seeing it remain pure. I smiled as she watched me lift the goblet to my lips and drink from it. In instinct, Diana reached for me in a panic, but I stepped away from her, holding the goblet away. Hey, hey, you gave it to me. But it's... Diana. I stared plainly at the succubus, reaching my free hand into my pocket and revealing the still-corked vial. I held it out to her, and she gently took it, staring at it before looking back up at me. You deserve to rule this world. Anyone who says otherwise is an idiot. Diana's eyes began to water as her face became red and her lips began to tremble. Did she really expect me to use the vial? I mean, we are, but I just wanted to see how this played out. <laughs> she held the vial tightly and covered her eyes, most likely not wanting me to see her cry. I felt incredibly sorry for her, seeing her weep silently. She was a target, and she expected her death to come around because of her standing as Queen of the Rebellion. What will Diana do when she officially takes the crown of the entire demon world? I waited as Diana rubbed her eyes and cleared her throat, now finished with her personal breakdown. She looked to me and smiled just slightly. Well, I guess one drink won't hurt me, huh? She twisted her free hand through the air and formed a second go goblet filled with the same liquid that was in my cup and raised it towards me. I smiled and clinked my goblet against hers. Thank you, my dear. To the new queen of the Abyssal Plains, long may she reign. We simultaneously sipped our drinks and let the worlds ring between us. It was a worthy toast, and Diana deserved it. She would be the new queen of the demon world. Well, you okay. did it! Congratulations! Diana became one of the most beloved rulers in all of demon world history. Her natural heart of gold led her to lead the world to a prosperous future, one filled with peace and happiness. However, she had a long list of words to say against the rebel leaders. You did give her the vial of poison, after all? Yeah, I did. While Diana had a heart of gold, she wasn't at all forgiving of what they had attempted to do to her through you. She made them choose between death or banishment from the Central Council. Faye, Sergeant, and Rabbit chose banishment. Shadow chose death. Of course he did. That stupid beautiful boy. And I believe that is everything that happened after- okay. And is that how it all... Ah, yes. I was on James was rude, by the way. I wanted to see if he had anything to say about that. Apparently not. Okay. So, let us reload now. Sorry, girl. I should have done that last. <laughs> so she could have got her revenge against everybody that tried to poison her. But oh well. 
I was curious to see if it would do anything. I thought maybe it wouldn't be that long, but it was actually, uh, it was actually a nice thing. Oh well. So, now it's time for Shadow to poison her. Let's see how this goes. So that he doesn't die, that stupid, stupid Baka. I bit my lip. It didn't feel right, but I knew what I had to do. I made a promise, and it had to be done. I silently took the vial from my pocket and uncorked it, feeling the magic of the liquid within waft from the open top. It had a slightly foul stench, but before I could reach Diana's nose, I poured the contents into the goblet. But why is she allowing us to kill her? The wine gently brightened from a purple to a green color. I swore for a second that it reflected a black skull in its reflection, but it faded away almost as quickly as it had happened. Some snow white, uh, queen level magic. I felt the crown on my head wither and fade away as I quietly tossed the vial off the balcony rail behind me into the dark. Wow, okay, so then it's like, you are not worthy anymore. For some reason, I felt like crying, but I knew what had to be done. <clears throat> I finally cleared my throat, letting Diana know I was done. <sighs> Diana finally turned to me and looked at the goblet, watching the liquid within it glimmer in the moonlight. I could faintly hear Diana gulp to herself as she took the goblet in her hand and looked into it. You know, I'm thankful it was you who did this. But why? I stared at Diana, feeling her gift drop from behind my ear and fall into the dark beyond the balcony. She continued to stare into her goblet with a very sad smile across her lips. I don't deserve to rule this world. I've done what I set out to do, and now that the war is over, my job is done. I'm glad that you are the one to let me know that. Diana... Diana shook her head, silencing me. It's all right. I understand. As vain and prideful as it sounds, I'm too powerful to be left alive. <sighs> she then lifted the goblet and turned to face me slightly, closing her eyes and smiling as if nothing was wrong. One last drink, then. For a job well done. My heart squeezed tightly in my chest as I watched Diana lift the goblet to her lips and drink down what was within it. Her eyes tightened and her face grimaced with the consumption, most likely at the taste, but she drank the entire thing down. <laughs> as she lowered the goblet to the railing, she took in a shaky breath and tightened her grip on the rail. Was it affecting her already? <laughs> I guess they wanted it to be painless. How kind. <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't be. It's done. Diana tossed the goblet into the dark and watched it arc through the air before fading into the night. She then turned and sat on the bed in the room, slumping slightly as she settled into the middle of it. I stared as the taint on her skin began to glow slightly. Diana looked up at me and smiled, leaning back against the bedpost. You should go, dear. I'm sure your husband is waiting for you. May your journey back to the human world be safe. And may you live a happy life. Grief, you got me choking back tears over here, girl. I couldn't say anything else to her. I nodded and left the room, silent. <laughs> I slowly made my way through the halls of the castle back towards where my husband and the rest of the group was. I was a murderer. I had technically usurped the throne from the Almost Queen, and now I had to live with that. However, I stopped as I spotted a figure ahead of me. Shadow stood just ahead of me with a stoic look on his face. Why did he look that way? He wasn't the one who did the deed. Is it done? It is finished. I nodded, not able to speak. Sergeant... Sergeant? Shadow? Nodded back to me before he... Before, before he walked towards me, stopping in front of me. Well done. This world deserves a better ruler than her. I didn't want to speak to him. I had fulfilled my promise, and I would have to live with the memory of it forever. However, I didn't expect him to touch my head and cast a spell. Your job is done. I stared wide-eyed, watching in surprise as my mind became lighter. Memories of what had happened began to slowly dissolve, and my heart became lighter at the loss of the memories. Was this some kind of joke? Man, he can get rid of my memories too. Before I knew it, I felt at ease where I stood. I was in the middle of the hallway, with Shadow, unsure of why I was there. What had happened? There you are. The others are waiting for you. It's time for you to leave. It was kind of him in a way to do that, at least. 
I stared at Shadow, confused but determined to return to where I was. The others were waiting and I was about to go home. I nodded with a smile before walking with him back to the main hall. I was going home. Well, you did it! Congratulations! You would think demons would be more hostile towards each other, being demons and all, but the threat of the demon lord was what brought the entire world together. I got the betrayal achievement. Because of... Well... Because you decided to kill Diana, the rebels were able to take over and unite the world under their rule. I still will never understand why you did it, but I guess you had your reasons. I'm a completionist. I had to know where this storyline was gonna go. If you didn't want to know where it was gonna go, you shouldn't have written it in, Kay. It's all your fault. I'll be honest, though. They don't exactly work well together. While the world accepted them as the rulers, the four of them really couldn't get it together. Unless it was on Sam's route. So they decided that only one of them should rule while the others should be advisors. It took them a while to decide who to let take the crown. Mm -hmm. Soon though, Shadow pretty much assassinated <laughs> the other three demons, becoming impatient with them for their lack of action and decision. Uh, of course he did. Oh my goodness. I think I, I just got an achievement that says Shadow's Dictatorship. This is not gonna end well, is it? Shadow took up the crown and ruled with a stern and strict hand. Using his shadow agents, he was able to obtain a new world order, one filled with fear and obedience. No one has yet to stop him. Even now, he continues to keep every demon in the world under his hand, claiming to bring peace through control of their fear. He has a sick idea that he's the world's god and the only candidate worthy of the universe's throne. Wow. I've always hated that guy. Aw. And I believe that is everything that happened after... Well... Okay, so that should be it, right? I can just look at my boy's face for days and not remember that I uh, did a terrible thing. That's good. <laughs> oh, Shadow. I guess it was too much to hope that he would be a Nazaki-type ruler, but oh well. I, I hoped that they shared more than just looks in common. Uh, Welp. <laughs> I guess I should have seen that coming. Alright, so that's what happens as Shadow rules the world. Nothing good. Okay, now who did I train with next? Was it Sergeant? Or Faye? Hold on. Let me look at my notes. Notes, notes, notes. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Yeah, I think it was Sergeant. Yeah. Okay. Sergeant next, then Faye, and then Rabbit. So, I will, uh, I'll bring you in when we, uh, let Sergeant rule the world, I guess. I guess it'll be after I kill Diana. And uh, we'll see what Sergeant's reaction is to that. Okay, see you in a little bit, guys. All right, the deed is done yet again. And uh, so we're going with Sergeant and we'll see what happens when we run into him. I spotted a Sergeant ahead of me. Sergeant stood just ahead of me with a stoic look on his face. Why did he look that way? He wasn't the one who'd done the deed either. Mission complete. I nodded, not able to speak. Sergeant nodded back to me before before he walked towards me, stopping in front of me. You did the right thing. The demon world will be a much better place without her. I didn't want to speak to him. I had fulfilled my promise and I would have to live with the memory of it forever. However, I didn't expect him to touch my head and cast a spell. Well done. I stared wide-eyed, watching in surprise as my mind became lighter. Memories of what had happened began to slowly dissolve, and my heart became lighter at the loss of the memories. Was it some kind of joke? Before I knew it, I felt at ease where I stood. I was in the middle of the hallway with Sergeant, unsure of why I was there. What had happened? There you are. Stop wandering around. The others are waiting for you. I stared at Sergeant, confused but determined to return to the others. They were waiting, and I was about to go home. I nodded with a smile before walking with him back to the main hall. I was going home. Well, right. you 
did it! Congratulations! So they decided that only one of them should rule while the others should be advisors. It took them a while to decide who to let take the crown. Sergeant's defiance, that said. When the other three voted for Sergeant to take the throne, he outright refused. What? He didn't believe himself to be worthy of it at all and practically demanded that the four of them work out whatever issues they had. Shadow voted for Sergeant? What kind of alternate universes have I jumped into? They eventually did, and worked out a way to bring the world to a steady, if not consistently returning, peace. It wasn't totally different from how the world was before the rule, but at least it wasn't riddled with wars. Sargent took it on himself to make sure that there were no possibilities of any genocide amongst any race in the Abyssal Plains, though. He is one truly admirable brute demon. And I believe that is everything that happened after, well, except for your story anyway. Wow, so he was just like, nah, I ain't ruling. We're all gonna like work together on this, so get your shit together, guys. <laughs> I salute thee, Sergeant, for being a Cinnabon. Good job, my dude. <sighs> all right, so that's what Sergeant ended up deciding to do. Uh, I guess next up will be Faye. So we'll see how they decide to rule. See you in a little bit, guys. All right, we've done it again. Let's run into Faye and see what happens this time. Faye floated just ahead of me with a look of sadness on their face. Why did they look that way? They weren't the ones who did the deed. Well, at least they don't look stoic. Did you? I nodded, not able to speak. Their frown deepened before they floated over towards me, stopping in front of me. It's for the best, I promise. I didn't want to speak to them. I had fulfilled my promise, and I would have to live with the memory of it forever. However, I didn't expect them to touch my head and cast a spell. Time to forget now. I stared wide-eyed, watching in surprise as my mind became lighter. Memories of what had happened began to slowly dissolve, and my heart became lighter at the loss of the memories. Was this some kind of joke? Before I knew it, I felt at ease where I stood. I was in the middle of the hallway with Faye, unsure of why I was there. What had happened? Hey, silly! What are you doing out here? Your ride back home is waiting for you! Wow. They, uh, they put that voice on, like, really well. I would never have thought anything was amiss. I stared at Faye, confused, but determined to return to where I was. The others were waiting, and I was about to go home. I nodded with a smile before walking with them back to the main hall. I was going home. Well, you did All it! Right. Congratulations! So they decided that only one of them should rule while the others should be advisors. It took them a while to decide who to let take the crown. Faye's abandonment. In the end, Faye took up the throne. Their growth in training you and their instinct to point out possible dangers became a well-valued asset at the top of the world. But Fey demons aren't really the most responsible demons in the world. You don't say. Soon enough, Fey left the throne, tired of trying to rule and escape to a remote part of the world, bent on rebuilding the clan that they had lost to the demon lord before the war happened. The other demons tried to fix what they had done, but soon their rule crumbled and the world went back to being as it was, separated by kingdom and caste. And I believe that is everything that happened after, well, except for your story anyway. Right. Okay. Well, <laughs> kind of expected that from Faye, to be honest. Oh, dear. And then the other three just couldn't keep it together without them. That's how the world crumbles sometimes. Well, I'm most interested in seeing how Rabbit decides to lead, because she wanted to abolish the slave slavery pardon me, the slavery of her people. So, I'll see you when I get to where her ending will be, guys. Okay, see you in a little bit. All right, guys, here we are. Last time. We spot Rabbit ahead. Rabbit stood just ahead of me with a look of sadness on her face. Why did she look that way? She wasn't the one who did the deed. I like that Sergeant and Shadow looked stoic, but Faye and Rabbit just looked Faintly sad. Did you give it to her? I nodded, not able to speak. 
Rabbit let out a small sigh before, before she walked towards me, stopping in front of me. I know it must have been difficult, but it had to be done. I didn't want to speak to her. I had fulfilled my promise, and I would have to live with the memory of it forever. However, I didn't expect her to touch my head and cast a spell. I'm sorry. I stared wide-eyed, watching in surprise as my mind became lighter. Memories of what had happened began to slowly dissolve, and my heart became lighter at the loss of the memories. Was this some kind of joke? Before I knew it, I felt at ease where I stood. I was in the middle of the hallway with Rabbit, unsure of why I was there. What had happened? <laughs> there you are. Come. Your husband and the others are waiting for you. She put on that voice pretty well, too. I stared at Rabbit, confused but determined to return to where I was. The others were waiting, and I was about to go home. I nodded with a smile before walking with her back to the main hall. I was going home. Well, you did it! Congratulations! So they decided that only one of them should rule while the others should be advisors. It took them a while to decide who to let take the crown. I'm a little worried. The achievement is Rabbit's extremism. At the agreement of the others, Rabbit took up the throne. Her wisdom about the world and her devotion to peace and equality became an admirable trait amongst the other leaders. However, while her ideas were great, her passion towards her people became... Well... The minute she became queen, she demanded the release of her fellow animal demons from slavery and servitude, saying that anyone who resisted would face death. Some demons agreed. But the majority of them did not. Oh no, that warning came true. Within the span of a week, the number of the animal demons that lived in the abyssal plains went from millions to hundreds. Because the powerful majority of the world would have rather seen their servants and slaves dead than free. <sighs> Rabbit was crushed and eventually became the victim of assassination. The other leaders couldn't even show their face to the world and went into hiding, leaving the world to return to the old, broken caste system. And I believe that is everything that happened after, well, except for your story anyway. Except... I'm gonna end this on a no. Hold on. Well, thank you, my dear. To the new queen of the Abyssal Plains, long may she reign. She would be the new queen. Well, you did it! Congratulations! You've made it to the end of your story. I have to say, I am very surprised at how it turned out. Yeah, you would have thought that I would have decided in the end not to give her the drink. <laughs> After all of that, Sergeant Cinnamon Bun is the only one that kept everybody together. Oh dear, and Shadows was just too funny. Of course, that's how it ended. But uh, nope, Diana, you're the only, you're the only true ruler for this world. So, I tip my hat to you, girl. You keep being you, and you slay. All right. So that was the trainer endings. I'm glad I did it just to see how their personalities affected the way they ruled. So yeah. It was an interesting time, for sure. Thank you guys for joining me for that. I hope you enjoyed it. And now we've only got one more thing left to do here, which is the blooper reel. And then I'll do some final thoughts on what I thought about this game. So, hopefully I'll see you over there for that. I'm sure hilarity will ensue. And, uh, yeah. Alright, until then, guys. I will see you later.